All right, so this section is on basic concepts of Euclidean geometry. So it starts off talking about uh, what a ray is, point is, line, segment, and all of those things. So we will start off uh, at the examples. Feel free to look at those definitions. But the first thing they ask of you guys Oh, I that wrong. And All right, so this is the first example that they give us. X, Y, and Z are all on line L. Given X, Y is equal to nine meters and Y, Z is equal, it's twice X, Y, find X, Z. So they tell us that, and I wanna use blue here. This is nine and this is twice that. So let's say if we wanted to set it up algebraically, um, do we want to go that route? Let's do it like this. All right. If we look at this whole segment, we have X, Y plus Y, Z is equal to X, Z, right? We have this segment right here of X, Y. If you were to add that, to YZ, then you have the whole segment of XZ. All right. So we know the relationship between YZ and XY. We know that it is. If we look at XY, we have XY here and YZ is two times x, y. It says that y, z is twice x, y. Now we know x, y to be nine. So that means y, z is two times nine. Two times nine is 18. Nine plus 18. Is 27. So XZ would be equal to 27 meters. All right. Let's see where else we go. Guess we do one more like that. We have A, B, C, all on line L, given B, C, C equals 16 feet. And A, B is equal to one fourth of BC, find AC. All right, so they give us this line segment or this line. A, B, C, and the relationship goes 
as follows, AB plus BC equal to segment AC. And AB is one fourth BC. We saw that BC is equal to 16. One fourth of 16 would just be four. So you just divide the four into 16. And then four plus 16 is 20. I think we're in meters, no feet, we're in feet, 20 feet. All right, let's look at some relationships here, geometry relationships. It's a little sketchy. Okay, try to do that best way I could. Parallel lines. Yeah, so we're not, never, we're not talking about slopes. So lines that never touch across. And looking at perpendicular lines. Try to squeeze that in there. Uh, so parallel lines are lines that never cross or touch. Perpendicular lines are lines that create a 90 degree angle at their intersection. All right. So you always have to see that square. You can never, I uh, like that better. Never assume that you have 90 degrees. So you can never assume that you have a 90 degree angle. Always has to be stated some way, somehow, because to the naked eye, 89 degrees looks like 91 degrees, which will look like 90 degrees. So either you need to see this square in your angles or they have to tell you that they're perpendicular lines or something has to be stated in order for you to know that you have 90 degrees. All right. Just two ways. So angles are just two rays with the same endpoint. And that endpoint is your vertex.
All right, so types of angles. Your acute angle would be between zero and 90 degrees. A right angle, and let me do this. I'll rewrite that. So Q angle would look like that. Right angle is just 90 degrees. Once again, don't forget you have to have that square in your 90 degrees or some type of wording or symbolism to let you know that you have a 90 degree angle. Obtuse is going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Uh, let me draw that better. And then your straight angle. is 180 degrees, which is just a straight line. All right. I guess one more could be um, rotation. Uh, do that for the... So whether it's a rotation or revolution, 360 degrees. Start here and go around one, one time. So one full rotation or one full revolution is 360 degrees. All right. All right, so complementary angles are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So uh, 50 and 40 degrees are complementary. One and 89 would be complementary angles. Supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. All right, so 150 degrees and 30 degrees are, are kind of supplementary. Two and 178 would be supplementary. So just two angles to add to give you 180 degrees. So 
So uh, just going back, if they ask you what's the supplement of 30 degrees, then that would be 150. If they ask you what is the complement of 50 degrees, then that would be 40. So that's the terminology they could use. All right, let's look at another example. So given that the measure of ABC, of the measure of angle ABC is 84 degrees, find the measure of angle X. So that's what that terminology right there means. If you have an M in front of a little angle symbol, the measure of angle ABC. All right, so. So that's ABC and 47 is inside of this ABC. So what we're looking at is that we have angle X plus 47 degrees is equal to angle ABC. So angle X we don't know still, 47. It says the measure of angle ABC is 84 degrees. So now to solve for angle X, we would just subtract 47 degrees from both sides. We cancel on the left, leaving you with the measure of angle X equal to 37 degrees. All right. So vertical angles. Oh, let's see. Okay, so I tried to write that good and I messed it up, but it's okay. So vertical angles are formed by intersecting lines. The non-adjacent angles are the vertical angles and they are equal. So what do we mean by that? Intersecting lines, it's two lines that cross. So this means the vertical angles are one and three and two and four. So the angles that are opposite of each other 
by the angles that are vertical and they are equal to each other. So one and three and two and four are vertical angles to each other. And once again, that means they are equal to each other. All right, so they're asking us here in this diagram to find AC and D, and they give us B to be 115. So that one was given. So if we look at 15, 115B, and the first one that we could, or the most easiest one we could pick out as far as the answer is concerned when it comes to A, C, and D would be D, because D is opposite of B. So that means it's going to be 115 and it is a vertical angle to B. So that's where we got that, or why we have that. And we can find A or C uh, by the same, and with the same type of, uh, with the same amount of energy used. And what I mean by that is that either I can find A and relate it to B or find C and relate it to B. We have here a straight line that's created between A and B. And A, that means A and B makes up a straight angle. So in order to find A, I would do 180. Remember we said a, a straight angle is equal to 180 degrees. So I'll do 180 minus 115. And that would be 65 degrees. So we found that angle because it is a straight angle with B. Or I could have related it to D. I already knew D was 115. I could subtract 115 from 180 using D and still found that 16, I mean 65. And then I know what C is because C is opposite of A. And if A is 65, that means C is also 65 because it is a straight angle. straight angle with A or to A. I mean, not straight angle, sorry about that. Not straight angle, but vertical angle. Vertical angle to A. Remember it's a vertical angle, then it's equal to. So in this next diagram, let's see. That's one A, I mean one R. Thank you. 
All right, so transversal is just a line that intersects two lines at different points. So that's what T is, T is a transversal. The main thing that we have going here that we have to pay attention to is to the fact that L1 and L2 are parallel lines and they create these eight angles. We have A, B, C, D, W, X, Z, and Y. So these are gonna create relationships for us that we will be able to use to solve So let's look at the first one is alternate. Interior. I want that in black. So your alternate interior angles, they're going to be equal. So what are your alternate interior angles? So your interior will be these angles in here. And you're talking about alternate size of your transversal. So that means the measurement, uh, do I want to take in, let me get the M out of there. Angles D, and X are equal, they're on different sides of your transversal, alternate sides of your transversal, and angles C and W are alternate interior angles. They're on the inside, like I said, the inside angles, these four are your inside angles, they're inside the creation of your parallel lines, and they're on alternate sides of your transversal. So D and X, C and W. All right. Next one, alternate exterior angles. So alternate exterior angles. So that would be the angles on the outside, A, B, Z, Y. So you're talking about alternate sides of your transversal. So there's gonna be A, Y. And the reason why these are important, they are equal. So angles A and Y and then B and Z. Our alternate exterior angles. So once again, exterior means the outside angles that are created. So A and B, Z and Y, and then alternate sides of your transversal. So A, Y, B and Z are equal. Last one dealing with this diagram, corresponding angles. So what we're looking at when we go here, we have corresponding angles, this cluster, and then this cluster. They're saying that they are equal. So you're talking about A and W, B and X, D and Z, C and Y. So we have two different clusters here of angles, the first cluster is A, B, C, D, second cluster, W, X, Y, Z, and 
and so they're going to be equal to each other as well. That cluster. Uh, on black. So angle A is equal to angle W. Angle B is equal to angle X. Angle C is equal to angle Y. Angle D is equal to angle Z. All right. So let's do an example with that. We're almost finished. You see that uh, symbolism that means parallel. So it says L1 is parallel to L2. Remember, that's what we need. All right, so, well, let me draw a diagram first before I say anything. All right, so they give us A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. All right, and they tell us that F, I'll write this better. F was 58 degrees, and that was given. All right, so we know F is 58 degrees. So we can use any relationship that we have up to this point in order to try to figure out what these angles are. Um, there are only going to be about two numbers that are going to be using that are going to be used, and they will be repeated amongst these uh, values. So when we look at F, the first place we can go without any calculation, or one of the easiest places we can go without any calculation would be to H. And because remember that's opposite of F. And if that's the case, that means it is a vertical angle. And that is also 58 degrees. So that's a vertical angle to F. All right. So now if you wanted to find, uh, let's say G, that creates a straight line with F. So that means G will be calculated by doing 180 minus 58. Which would be equal to 122. And like I said before, that's straight angle let's see, with F. So then we have G, so that means also we have E, because E is opposite of G. And so it's vertical angle to G. So that means E is 122 as well. 
that's a vertical angle to G. All right, so now to find A, B, C, and D, you can use uh, whichever one you like to use as far as those relationships, alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding angles. I probably would just go ahead and use corresponding angles. I have this cluster calculated already. I can now mirror that cluster onto A, B, C, D. So in other words, A is going to be whatever F is. A is going to be 58 degrees. It corresponds to F. B is going to be 122. If you want it to correspond, uh, I'll put COSS. If you want it to correspond to what G, you could, or you can say that it is an alternate exterior angle to E. Or you can say it's a straight angle to A. You can just subtract 58 from um, uh, 180 and got 122. So there are multiple ways of finding your answers once you have one piece of information. Um, it's up to you what you want to use and what, what is easiest would be based on what you see first. And so D would be 122. Oh, right in the wrong spot. D will be 122. Once again, you can say that it's, uh, and I'll just use a different one. I'll say vertical angle to B because it's opposite, opposite of B. And then C is 58 degrees. Um, you can switch it up and say alternate interior. If I can write in here, alternate interior angle to F. Or you could have used the fact that it was a straight angle with uh, created a straight angle with B or use the fact that it was a vertical angle to A. Either way, you should have 58 degrees there. All right, one more thing and then we'll be done with this section. I believe it's angles over triangle, where you go, yep. Angles of a triangle. Mm -hmm. Let me do it this way. See the All right, so the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if I had to draw that out. All that means is that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. And that will always be the case. Once they mention that they have a triangle or once you see that you have a triangle, uh, they will not say anything else and expect you to know that those angles on the inside of that triangle will add up to give you 180 degrees. So let's look at one more example and then close it out. Of D. So in the diagram, the measure of C is 40 degrees, measure of E is 60 degrees, 
find the measure of D. All right. All right, they said just find D. Look, let's just see if we can find all of these. We should be able to, let's look. So we got the measure. Matter of fact, I'll write these down here so I have more room. We're gonna angle A, angle B, C, D and E. So it says E is 60 and C is 40. All right, so if E is 60, that means A is also 60 because they are vertical angles to each other. So A is 60 degrees, vertical angle to E. All right. And so we have C and A, that's 60, and this is 40, C and A. So we can figure out what B is. We will find it out by taking 180. Uh, I was using three eight here. 180 minus 60 minus 40 would give us 80 degrees. And that is angles of a triangle. Angles of triangle add up to give you 180 degrees. So I subtracted the angle of 60 and 40 from it to find B, which was 80 degrees, add those up, you should get 180. And then to finish this off, we recognize that B and D represents or uh, make up a straight line, which is a straight angle. So I would take 180 to find D, I would take 180 and then minus 80 from it, which is B, and that will give me 100. And I get that because it is a straight angle with angle B. So if you create a straight line, remember straight line is always gonna be equal to 180 degrees. So B was 80 degrees, subtract that 80 from 180, and that left me with 100. And that was what they wanted. So ultimately your answer is 100 degrees. All right, so that is it for section 7.2. Let me know if you have any questions.